Hello and welcome back to another episode of Farming Life at Lafourche. So, first of all, I would like to apologise for not getting my usual Tuesday video out yesterday. I had some computer problems that wiped away about half of the editing I had done. Um, so by the time I got it all sorted, this video will be probably, hopefully, up on Wednesday. But we will continue doing our Friday video as normal. So now we are starting to do our Tuesday and Friday videos. So getting two videos up a week. And we put them up at about 6 o'clock French time, which would be 5 p.m. Irish and English time. Um, so yeah, be sure to look out for the Friday video now as well. As for today's episode, first up I am going to be updating you on my garden. Bring it around, show you what has grown, what hasn't grown and anything else that I have done so far. Then dad is going around spraying around the fences. So spraying down to keep down the weeds um, just so that there's a lot less work in the summer while the cattle are out, the fence can have good power in it. So I'll show you um, how he sprays it, why he sprays it with and a bit of that. Then myself and mam are bringing up the kids. So if you remember before the kid goats um, that we bought, they're now weaned and they're going up to the shed that you saw dad cleaning out the other day. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and don't forget to like and subscribe down below. this note to garden I am now going to plant I have planted a few things already um, but I didn't have my camera each time I had clips on my phone that I'll also show you through the way but basically I've taken the plastic off my gardens now a lot of you might ask why I don't keep the plastic on because it keeps down weeds I don't like plastic for many many reasons um, one it doesn't look good um, I also want a garden that looks nice. The main reason is um, pests. So while the plastic was on it, the few times I'd taken it off, the first time there was mice running all around it. So I finally put down rat poison and got rid of them. Second time when I took it off just there the other day, and there's anthills everywhere and slugs all around. The plastic just draws every insect, every animal that will be drawn to it. And um, you don't know that they're there because they're under the plastic. So unless you lift it up and see, that's that's the main reason for me. Um, the second thing is water. So the main reason is um, the rodents, then it's also the look of it, but it's also water. I don't want to have to be coming over here every day to water because I'm not over here every day yet. I probably will be during the summer, but as of now, um, I'm only over here every odd day during the week. If I have plastic on it, I need to set up a way of washing either with rose under the plastic or coming over and washing it myself because obviously the rain doesn't get through the plastic. And the other thing is the heat. So in the summer over here, it does get really hot. Now plastic would be fine. If it was like this weather now, it would actually draw the heat to the ground and it would keep the plants nice and warm for growing, which would be fine. But during the summer when the plants are fruiting or vegetable and whatever the word is for that, the hot plastic will actually make them ripen too fast. So it's all to do with sugar levels in it and all that is the heat, which is why you don't pick fruit, say, too early in the morning. You want to wait for it to warm up a little bit because the sugar level will be right in the fruit. Um, but when it's on plastic, it'll actually, instead of the sun doing its work to ripen the fruit, it'll ripen from the heat of the plastic and it'll actually won't ripen properly. The outside will ripe, the inside won't be as ripe. So. If you picked a strawberry, for example, it wouldn't be as sweet as if the sun had ripened it um, because it's only the outside that's ripened and the inside hasn't got the right sugar levels and all that sort of stuff. And um, then it'll start to rot faster as well. So there are all the reasons I don't like plastic. Obviously, it is probably the best way to keep away weeds. But I would prefer to have to manage the weeds rather than um, watering every day, heat and pests. So that's just my choice. I know a lot of people like plastic. 
So I'm going to see how this works. I have still got the plastic if the weeds are getting just way too much, like I'll show you in a minute, one patch is. Um, if the weeds are just getting too much, then I can always put the plastic back on after and cut the slits. But for now, I'm going to try it without and see um, how well I manage. I might F up, but oh well. So some plants I planted have grown. Some I've bought. So my celery didn't grow. So I have bought 12 of celery. If it comes up later, that's fine, but I don't think it will. Um, also cabbages, because the cabbage seed I had was from maybe last year or the year before, I wasn't sure. My kale is grown, but man bought me some anyways, and for some reason there's cabbage plant in it, so now that's in the wrong spot. As for my plants, the one thing, and only one thing, that grew very, very well was the courgettes. Now I already have um, three of these planted, and I have one more that I didn't plan on planting, but I actually have enough room for. So my courgette plants. Courgettes do need sunlight to grow. Here we'll get sun now. There's a bit of shade, so it's partial sun. Here I'm planting um, melons and they obviously need full sun, so that's the right spot for them. As for my tubs, now I did a bit of filming on this, so I'll either show it to you before or after this clip. These are my strawberry plants in one big tub and here I have started sowing. So I have two lines of rocket one line of spinach and now I'm going to plant the lettuce. The lettuce I was going to buy in the shop anyways because it's super cheap and point is trying to grow from seed it costs the same thing. So this is going to be for all salads and stuff. Now the garden, the garden has overgrown. So basically since that video where I was complaining to you guys about not having any rain um, we haven't had a day without rain since. So the last time that um, we had a dry day, basically the garden didn't even need to be cut. And now we have the first dry day since really, and it is overgrown. So I'm gonna go with the lawnmower and at least get the most of around my garden done. Dad can probably come in and mow the rest of that. Um, I'll see how much I get done today. But then because this is overgrown, I haven't done the edges of the garden nicely. Now I'll show you what else I've planted. So this is the big patch that I was going to do for potatoes and basically anything, um, bulbs, carrots, all that stuff. I have planted my very first potatoes and they are all coming up there. I've planted them quite close together. But yeah, so this side is all, I've been keeping it weeded, keeping it watered. It's been raining so I didn't need to water it. But this side is all weeds. So I haven't planted anything, so I haven't been taking care of it as of yet. But I'm going to plant. So there I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there I have seven rows of um, potatoes. Now I'm going to plant another two, maybe three rows here. So they will be to harvest uh, a month later. Even though it's the same variety, we'll see how that ends up. But I have the space, so I'm going to try to plant them a bit later, just to delay because we won't eat them all at once. And then I will plant my onions. It's a bit late for onions, but Mam has planted hers already. So again, mine will be a few weeks later than that. And then I'm going to try carrots and stuff. Now the other problem I have is rabbits. So I'm going to try a few things to keep away the rabbits. And we'll see how that goes. So the grass is cut for at least the bit around, um, around my garden. All the rest over there is just way too long to cut. Um, with that so dad will have to come in with the mower but he can get around there easily I don't want him going near the edge of the garden so other than a bit of tidying up the garden is practically ready um, I'm going to start planting now We're getting ready to spray around fences. 
Jess says a little 600 litre Harley that was on the farm when we came. Uh, not wrong with it. So we kept it just for doing around the fences. So as well as that, uh, we have a lance here for doing some corners in case we're not held to get. So we made this shock here then. Piped up along, I can turn it on off the tractor. It's uh, just two jets off an old sprayer that was there. We have a filter in all here. And if it, if it hits something, if it bend, something like went to the field, I let it out here go. So it can get right into the corner, so I never have to get down. Uh, <coughs> put this on it, and I let that down close to the ground. So if it's there, if it breathes around, you don't see these big brown patches in the field. So that's. Uh, I put that on it as a lump of steel there to keep it heavy and uh, I find that works really well. Now we work two types of uh, spray. We put uh, Roundup and Garlon Star. That kills briars and all the tougher things. It doesn't kill grass. So we mix up the two. 600 litres does the whole farm. Takes me about a day and a half to do the whole lot. So I'm just setting it up here now, I was just cleaning it out and uh, I'd be heading off for the day. So we had that done a while, I was going to put it on a ram but I just did that quick the first year and I never had to change it, it's okay. It's on the quick release so it's no bother, <coughs> you just pull the lever and it falls off. So uh, that's all. It, uh, I've, Show you if we have it working in a few minutes. Uh, we're just filling the sprayer there now. And uh, that was all. So um, it's just a normal hose back along. And uh, the sprayer was no good for antennas. The small little sprayers now, no one wants them. And uh, it just does that. Plus, uh, I just have it piped here out of one section. But if I want to, I can turn off this hose and use the sprayer. But what I do use sometimes is on roadways. Uh, if I'm going in and out, there's a lot of roadways, I uh, need to turn this on to spray the middle of the road. And uh, so that's it, I'll show you it working later on. And that's just, uh, I put that on it, you have to have them on it here for washing your hands. for. Sprayers over here, I think it's the same in Ireland and England now, we have to get them, uh, you put the, put that sticker on every three years and they come and uh, control it or uh, pass it as the fellow says. It costs about two or three hundred euro every two or three years and uh, well you won't get the sprays now unless you have it. So. Uh, that's all, them hardy sprayers, there's not much to go around with them once you keep the antifreeze and that in them during the winter.
bull actually kill. That's why I like to leave it down as low, but if, if the spray hits the ditch up high, it'll burn it brown. So I like to just keep it about there. So the spray will just hit it, not to burn the ditch. So I need a bit of yolk. You can see where it is last year. It's still kind of clear here. So I just fly along. If it kill these new shoots that's coming up out of black turn, we'll try not to hit the ditch. And uh, plus with all the fences we have to do, I would like to be sitting on a quad right beside it trying to spray. It'd be a bit unhealthy. So um, hopefully now today I'll get most of it done. And uh, what they call it because take them. We, we wouldn't be able to keep it all done with a strimmer, not a hope in hell. And why we need fences, electric with barbed wire or good ditches is bulls. We have we run nine bulls on the farm. Uh, it's okay, maybe with just heifers, they won't root in the ditches. That ditch there, you can see where there was no cattle at it. And it's nice and thick. And uh, if you had a bull here and no electric fence, you had a big hole in that everywhere. Or even the cows with the horns. So, uh, that's why we have the fences. We keep them out well. So, we don't even have to move them for the hedge cutter. And then they come along and there's no bother. And, uh, so that's just another thing we do here. Sometimes if I see a, a bad spot, say we're holding nettles or that, I might give it a dart in the middle of the field as well, just to kill down whatever is there. So I'm gonna crack on, as the funky farmer says. A while back I am going to regret in a few minutes getting in with them um, so they're all big now we have just moved them up to the big goat shed so dad you seen clean out last time with the bobcat there or the skid steer so we weaned these off about two three weeks ago off the milk hey you. Um, so we weighed them and we weaned them when they're about 15 kilos um, so 15 kilos and over we then can take them off the milk and they go on to just meal, hay and water. So even though they've been weaned off, even though they've been weaned off some of them three weeks ago, they're still quite noisy, they're still quite 
they're worse than cattle when they're being weaned. They will cry and cry and cry and you'd think that they were dying. Ow. So that's this group now. We still have a few on the milk. Um, they'll be weaned off hopefully over the next few weeks. Um, whenever they get to 15 kilos and then we'll bring them up here as well. So you've just seen um, us moving them up here. When moving the goats, um, it's a little bit different than the cattle. Half of them will follow you, half of them will run away and half of them don't know where they're going. That's three halves, but anyways. Um, so man goes along with a bucket in front, they'll start following that, so we do it at their feeding time, so they'll be hungry for it. And then I will follow them behind because if they get distracted on the way, um, then I can hunt them back and then they'll start following the bucket again. They're not an animal that we move a lot. So it's not like cattle where we've been moving them from field to field. We barely ever move them, so they're not used to being moved and they don't know really the rest of the farm. So they get distracted quite easily. So that is our lovely alpine goats. for this week's episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.